Hi, my name's Harry Baker. Uh, I'm a student and a poet. Um, but before I got into poetry, I used to be a rapper, as you can probably tell by my swagger. Um, but I was always told you should write about what you know. So instead of writing raps about killing people or driving fast cars over people, I used to write raps about doing a paper round, playing with Lego and maths. So without getting too mathy too soon, if you imagine a Venn diagram where this circle is maths and this circle is Jay-Z, it's going for that kind of niche <laughs> crossover in the middle. So maybe imagine I've got some backing dancers and get into it. I've got my calculator on statistics mode, pencil and protractor run, I'm ready to go. They say that I'm a loser with no life and no hope, but I'm a mathematician. What type of facts are those? If you grow with sums that you were three and a third and could be talented with numbers without being a nerd to me, that don't seem irrational like surds. But if you don't like my logic, then just listen to my words. Now I may not be normal like a distribution curve, but if I don't fit in, well, I don't give a standard deviation. <laughs> they call me the denominator because I divide crowds like hyperbolic equations, yes. I don't know what you take me as, I'm the intelligence that HB has, but from fractions to decimals, I ain't dumb, I've got 99 problems, but maths ain't one, hit me. <laughs> 99 problems, but maths ain't one, and if you're having number problems, I feel bad for you, son, I got 99 problems, but maths ain't one, hit me. Dance is good. 99 problems, but maths ain't one, I check me, recite pilot, Mr. Powell Freeman. A maths teacher. 99 problems, but maths ain't one, and break it down for the pi so low, like 3.14159265358979323846264338327i5, which is related for 197.939375105105. That's 51 decimal places, and I've got a few more. Hitting them with the 820974, 9400307981, I've got. 99 problems, but maths ain't one. Hit me. <laughs> thank, you. Um, thank you very much. And yeah, as I got more into poetry, um, you know, I decided I wanted to be accepted as a, as a proper poet. And so to do that, I needed to write a love poem. Uh, but I wanted it to be cool. And so I put dinosaurs in it. Uh, <laughs> so this is called Dinosaur Love. I want to say I love you, but it seems it's not enough. Because when people say I love you, it can mean a lot of stuff like I'll always have your back or I'm glad I'm not alone. Or to be honest, I'd say anything so you'll hang up the phone because I'm kind of in the middle of something right now and these Doctor Who box sets ain't going to watch himself. I want to say I love you, but it seems it's not enough because when people say I love you, it can mean a lot of stuff and all I'm really trying to say is I want to love you like a T-Rex <laughs> with a tiny brain but a massive heart. And if I was a T-Rex, I could hold you in my T-Rex arms and you from harm because that's dinosaur love. <laughs> it's the way that you send spines down my spine like a stegosaurus or high just like dinosaurs. No one cares what came before us because I got that love so big it cannot be ignored like if you're with a dinosaur. Everything else seems secondary. Dinosaurs are not mythical creatures, they are legendary plus. Just really cool. The thing with dinosaurs is dinosaurs are kind of awesome, more like they actually existed. Yes, my love is real. I ain't talking blindly walking strings attached like Theseus. That's minotaur love. <laughs> when this is dinosaur love, this ain't no damsel in distress, trap princess, dragon slaying quest, because one, dragons never happen, two, most women don't need rescuing. Feminist dinosaurs. <laughs> this is less prancing unicorns, more two-ton triceratops, or terrifying pterodactyls tearing terror from above. It's dinosaur love. Morton rocking meter, it trust me, oh I got a love so old school, it's prehistoric. So if you're into Spielberg or hip hop with a classic vibe, then we could watch Jurassic Park or listen to Jurassic Five. And if you like a bone. Then I know a place so we could see them. I'm, I'm a lifetime member of the Natural History Museum. <laughs> I want to say I love you. But that might be awkward. So instead, I'm happy to let that state in my head where it cannot go wrong. 
And if as time goes on, my dino love dies out as you'd expect when it's extinct, I'd rather that we remain friends and became exes. But if somehow, against the odds, my dino love proves so colossal that it stands the test of time, perfectly preserved like a fossil, then one day, when you've been left in ruins and need someone to help excavate through it and take an archaeological expert to put you towards me. And at that point, I point out, you're like a brachiosaurus. Because there's no one above you. And I'll be able to look you in the eyes and say, Thank you very much. <laughs>